So here I am surrounded by lots of guitar amps. I've got little transistor amps here all the way up to sort of bigger valve amps with multiple speakers, etc. And I was going to talk today about impedance. What's impedance? Well, it's about matching speakers to your amplifier and how you uh, get the best possible result from your combination. Now we have combos here, lots of them, so they are actually designed with that all in mind. But sometimes you'll get speaker cabinets where you have to plug your valve amp into and they might be different cabinets with different speakers, different impedances. Now, there are four things to consider. The output of an amplifier is a voltage signal. Now, in order to get sound out of your speaker, your speaker is an impedance, a resistance. And if you apply a voltage across your resistance, a current will flow through that resistance, the speaker. Then the voltage multiplied by the current gives you your power. So these four things need to be thought of through very carefully. If we start with the transistor amp here, this is the h, &H VS Musician. It's a 100 watt amplifier into four ohms. There we go. So four ohms is your impedance, that's your speaker. Now if we liken this, for example, to uh, a van, where the amplifier is the engine and the van weighs four tons. So it drives along very nicely, thank you very much. Now we go to a quarry and pick up four tons of rubble, stick it in the back of the van. So you've now got eight tons. Of course, you're gonna get a reduction in your power available because the engine's gonna struggle a bit. That's what would happen with this. We would go from 100 watts at four ohms down to 60 watts or so at eight ohms. Notice that it's not a distinct halving of power because of things like heat loss and, and general efficiency of your amplifier, but you'd still get a lower power. If I connect 16 ohms up to this, the power drops further still. If I connect a pair of headphones up to this, which are a much, much higher resistance, the power will drop even further. If I then short out the output of the if I do a short circuit of the output of the amplifier, essentially I'd get zero ohms, uh, which is not good because voltage divided by resistance gives you the current. So if I have zero resistance, I'd end up with infinite current, which is quite tricky. Uh, and that results in flames and meltdown and new amplifier. So never short out your amp. That's transistors. Let's move on to valves now. We've got this Hona Vendetta 30 watt uh, valve amp. They're quite rare, these now. So this is a bit different. Now, a valve amplifier has an out a very high output impedance. That is, there's lots of voltage from your power amp, but with very little current associated with it. So how are we going to match that to a speaker? Well, the answer is you have to output that valve amplifier signal through an output transformer, which then feeds your speaker. What's a transformer? Well, it's something that steps a voltage either up or down, a bit like the pylons that cross the countryside, they've got massive voltages. And then you reduce the voltages to household current via a transformer. So we have the um, output of this, maybe 50 ohm output impedance of this valve amp. Going through this transformer, we've got to turn it into something that we can drive a 15 ohm impedance, which is the speaker that's inside this. So that's fine. We, we do that using the transformer. So what happens is your voltage decreases on the output of your transformer, but the current increases. That's fine. So what happens then if you go to a gig with an amplifier, maybe your valve head and you've got a, a valve a cabinet there that's got a different impedance to your amplifier? Well, it's not necessarily a problem. Uh, and in fact, you, if you've got lots of different cabinets in your studio, you can get quite creative with this. So if I have um, an 8 ohm output of my valve amp and I supply a 16 ohm cabinet, 
Actually, what happens is in practical terms, you get a slight increase in your mid range. So you can get, yeah, you can get your mids up there. If you, however, supply a lower impedance, like a four ohm speaker, you'll get a drop in your mid range. So it's not necessarily an issue that you have a mismatch of your um, uh, power amp to your speaker, but it can have a, an undesired effect as well. And also if you go too far one way, so let's say you've got a 16 ohm output of your amplifier and you connect it to a four ohm load, you are inviting problems. Now, if you don't connect a load to your amplifier, what you end up with is something quite nasty going on in your output transformer. You end up with lots of transient spikes because the speaker actually damps. It, it's moving and generating the sound, but it's also damping the system quite nicely so that everything, that there are no excessive spikes in voltage. So if you take your speaker away, you get lots of spikes, which will kill your output transformer, your output valves, and probably the power supply. So you don't want to do that. Anyway, there is a slight, there is a bit of a, an explanation on impedances and amplifiers. Now, if you've got multiple speakers, let's say with this Marshall here, it's a 50 watt amplifier supplying two speakers. How are you going to connect those speakers up? Well, there are two methods, well, three methods. In fact, there's a series arrangement, parallel arrangement, and then a combination of the two series parallel. If you've got four speakers, for example, or multiple eight speakers. So in here, this Marshall amplifier, there are two eight ohm speakers and they're wired in series. Now that means you, the amplifier goes into one eight ohm speaker and then into the other one and then back to complete the circuit that your current flows through. Two eight ohm speakers in series, it's easy. You just add those together. You have 16, that's fine. Parallel it's a bit different. If you've got your eight ohm speaker from your power amp and then you daisy chain or sorry, rather piggyback another eight ohm speaker onto that, you end up with something where the formula is a little bit more complicated. You have to say speaker A and speaker B, multiply those together. So it's eight times eight, 64, divided by A plus B which is eight plus eight, which is 16. So that's 64 over 16, which is four. So two eight ohm speakers in parallel give you four ohms. So you can use that formula to calculate if you have an eight ohm speaker and a four ohm speaker, for example, that's 32 over 12, which is 2.8 or something. So there's your um, way of calculating your speaker impedances. Now, this amplifier and the Marshall and the Vox AC30 have speaker impedance switches, which are more designed to cope with extra cabinets rather than tweaking a mid range. But the mid range thing is, is a byproduct of that change in your impedance. So there are your um, variable ones. This cabinet up here, this is the blunt instrument VS315, which is a 15 watt amplifier supplying an eight ohm speaker. That is fixed to eight ohms. Likewise, with the Fender 40 watt up there, that's also an eight ohm uh, setup. So lots and lots of different sounds, lots of possibilities, and lots of pitfalls not to fall into.